good to see everybody. Have you given somebody a smile this morning? Your best smile? If you see somebody you haven't seen for some time, especially turn to them and give them a good smile. You know? Have you done that? Good smile. And say, welcome, I love you. Have you said that to them? Say, say I love you. Say to them, I love you with the love of Jesus. I appreciate you. Thank you that you are here this morning because you are part of me. You are part of the body of Christ. We are, corporately, we are part of the body of Christ. Who knows this church is not the only church in the world. We are not a, an island. We are not exclusive. We are part of the larger body of Christ. All over the world, God's children are coming together in different nations, different languages, different cultures. But Jesus is the one that brings us together because He's the head of the body. Amen. He's got all authority. But we are the body. We are His body on earth. He is seated at the right hand side of the Father above all powers, principalities, and all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. Amen. I'm going to speak to you this morning about this topic, kingdom authority. Exalted by Holy Spirit in kingdom authority. I want to just clarify that so we can get the context here. And the context here is that to grow in kingdom authority or to be exalted in kingdom authority, we need to humble ourselves. The way up in the kingdom is the way down. It's opposite than what it is in the world. In the world, we reach for a position. A position gives us authority. This is the system in the world. If you are, if you are promoted into a position, you have certain authorities. If you become the head of traffic in South Africa, that position gives you great authority over traffic in South Africa. It's the position, and you, you get all the, the, you get the uniform, you get the badges, you get the cap, whatever is necessary, so that you can exercise governmental authority. I'm not speaking about that kind of authority. That authority does not work in the kingdom of God. We can have all the titles, all the badges, all the uniforms, all the degrees, everything, that authority is man-made authority. That's man's authority. That is not necessarily authority with God. So I'm speaking this morning about authority that we receive from the Lord. That is divine authority. And we need, all of us, need that kind of authority. To live in this world, we need divine authority. All of us. So the principle is that I need to humble myself. I need to become a, a servant of the Lord. In whatever way He calls me, I need to be a servant of the Lord. And by being a servant of the Lord, also serving the body of Christ, serving the kingdom of God, in whatever way. Even if, it's, if I'm called in my finances, God will use that to uh, advance His kingdom. So the authority I'm speaking about this morning is kingdom advancing authority. Jesus gave us authority to preach the gospel because without the authority of Jesus, we cannot preach the gospel. Can you say amen? We need authority, kingdom authority to preach the gospel, to cast out demons and to heal the sick. Without His authority, we cannot cast out demons. I'm reminded of the seven sons of Sceva. If you read in the book of Acts, you See there that they tried to cast out a demon out of a man. Now these seven sons of Sceva, they were the sons of a very important priest, a leading priest. So they thought they had the authority to cast out demons. But what they did, they said, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, we command you to come out of this man. And what did the demon do? The demon, the demon said to them, Jesus I know, and Paul I heard of, but who are you? And then he jumped on them and he tore their clothes off them. 
You see, when we have kingdom authority, we are known in the spiritual realm because God has got a kingdom and Satan, Satan has got a kingdom. But when we are exalted by Holy Spirit into kingdom authority, we get to be known in the, in the spirit realm. And even in that situation, the demon heard of Paul, but he never heard of them. Maybe they had just man-made authority. So, kingdom authority is, is that which the world cannot, cannot have. Kingdom authority is what Jesus regained for us. And I'm going to take you through this this morning. If you think of a key, a key is authority. In the natural world, a key means authority. So, sometimes you'll get a dream about a key. Then the Lord, the Holy Spirit is saying something to you about kingdom authority. He gave, he said to Peter, you are, Simon, you are Peter, and I give you the keys of the kingdom. He gave him authority, and then he went further and said, whatever you will bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose on heaven, in heaven. So what God said there, I give you this authority, this authority is kingdom authority. Okay, if you bind, I agree with you. Of course, it's according to God's will. Can you say amen? So we need to understand that kingdom authority is something that we grow in. Potentially, potentially, we have great authority in Christ. Great authority. But that's not our exp experience. That is not our experiential. Uh, that's not what we experience. We need to grow in that. Are you still with me here this morning? Okay, let's read the word. The Lord said to my Lord, this is David prophesying about King Jesus long before he was born. The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until, until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So when is Jesus going to come back when the enemy and our people are not the enemies of God? The demon powers, principalities and powers, Satan and his kingdom is the enemy of God. And the enemy is going to be cast down under, under Jesus' feet. And then also here, we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, For he raised us from the dead, speaking about us who are born again, he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms. Because we are united with Christ Jesus. This uh, union or, yes, union or unity goes along with authority. Even in the natural, if the husband and his wife is in union, there's authority in the home. So what does Satan do? He comes and he breaks that union. So then he causes division. And what happens to the children? They get divided and they become rebellious. I don't have to tell you this. You all know this and you've seen that. Also in a church, if Satan can come in, he will cause division in a church. Why? Because he wants to break the unity. Because where there is unity, there is power. There is authority to rule over him and to cast him out. Amen. So that's why Satan is trying everything in his power to cause division in the body of Christ. Now Jesus gave us some principles. He said the house divided the against himself cannot stand, it's going to fall. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Because at one time, the, the Pharisees, they blamed Jesus and said to him that you are casting out demons through the power of Satan. And Jesus said this, if a kingdom is divided against itself, it will not stand, it will fall. The devil cannot cast himself out. It's only by the power of Jesus that the demon can be cast out. Because these are two different kingdoms. Am I making sense here this morning? So when David said here in Psalm 110 verse 1, he was prophesying. He was pro prophesying about the Messiah who was going to come. He humbled himself and then he was exalted to the right hand of the Father God. Right hand means God's strong hand. It means strength. It means authority. It means Rulership, it means dominion. So Jesus is sitting now in a place 
of authority at the right hand of the Father. And what is happening, he is advancing his kingdom on earth. And I can give you the outcome, because the Bible gives us the out outcome. The kingdom of God is going to destroy the kingdom of Satan. Because Satan is the God of this world, but Jesus is going to destroy the kingdom of Satan. And how is he doing it? He's doing it through us. He's doing it through the body of Christ. Because we are His body on earth. But what we need to do, we need to get to that place where His authority can work through us. But we need to be humble in heart. Because, you know, if I pray for my brother here, and he's got a crippled arm here, and I pray and it gets healed. And I think it's by my goodness or my talents, I'm going to get puffed up. I'm, getting, I'm going to get prideful. You know, in this season that we are now, speaking about in this world, I, I don't even want to stand on the platform. There's a reason for that. Because they, there's too much pride in the church. Pride. So God will deal with our pride. He will humble us. The Bible says we need to humble ourselves, and then He will exalt us. Like what happened with Joseph. The Lord worked in his character for many years. We know the story, how he ended up in the prison. And everybody forgot about him. But Joseph humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. And at the right time he was exalted and he became the governor over Egypt. God wants governors over Egypt. But that, those governors must come from his body, from the kingdom. Can you say amen? Let me say to you, the kingdom of God is going to rule over the earth. Not the kingdom of Satan. Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years. It's very close. So when the Bible says here that we have been raised up with Christ, what does it mean? It means when we came to Jesus, we surrendered our lives to Him, we realized that we are lost, we need Him, and we can only be saved by grace. We are saved by grace through faith. Then what, what did we do? Symbolically, we went into the bath we got baptized meaning that we are the old man is dead the old man by faith we buried the old, old man this adam we buried the old man adam because his authority is not godly his authority means nothing in the kingdom of god can you say amen and then the bible says here that the lord he raised us up and he seated us with him now to to be seated when i go down and sit what does that mean I'm seated now. It means I'm not working. So I'm sitting with him at the right hand of the Father. I'm seated in him in a place of authority. Not my authority, his authority. So he works through me. He can work through me now. Spiritually, I'm seated with him. But physically, I'm on earth. I'm his body, and his authority can work through me. And through me, he can cast out demons. Through me, he can heal the sick. Through me, he can preach the gospel. Through me, he can show kindness and love. But I'm seated. Can you say amen? Why? Because Jesus already, did the, he already completed everything. He won the prize. He defeated Satan on the cross, and he, raised from, he rose from the dead. So the authority works through me. When I'm resting, when I'm surrendered, not my will, but your will. It says here that we are united with Christ. This is so important now because where there is unity... It's like the oil, that precious oil running down from the head of Aaron. Aaron, who was a high priest. Now, who knows that Jesus is our high priest, but according to the order of Melchizedek. Not according to the Levitical system. Not according to the law, but according to faith. He is our high priest. So we believe he's our high priest. And when we are in unity... 
the oil flows down over his beard, right down, over his mantle, and it comes down. And the word says, there the Lord commands his blessing. When the brethren dwell together in unity. Why? It releases kingdom authority. And Satan is scared. He's afraid of that. That's why he's trying to cause division. He's fighting for his life. But the kingdom of God is advancing, 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 advancing. Because the children of God are growing in the word. They are growing in the knowledge of the word. Can you say amen here? And the power of God is greatly increasing. I believe the best is yet to come. In Luke 9, chapter, uh, 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 1, we read, One day Jesus called together His twelve disciples and gave them power. Say, power. He gave them power. Now, remember, this was before the crucifixion and the resurrection and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus laid hands on Him. He was full of the power of the Holy Ghost, Ghost, and He imparted power by laying on of hands. He imparted power onto them. And they went with that power and they cast out demons. The word says here, He gave them power and authority to cast out all demons. I like this translation. All demons and to heal all diseases. Praise God. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Because God is not a respecter of persons. If the first disciples had the power to do that and the authority, we have the authority as well. Because we have the same Holy Spirit. Of course, after Pentecost, they were, they were taken to a next level of authority. There was so much authority in the, the, the apostles, the disciples, that the dead came back to life. It was, they had tremendous authority and the kingdom of God advanced rapidly. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people came to the Lord. And shortly after that, they grew to 5,000. They just kept on growing. Why? Because of kingdom authority. The, the, the kingdom of darkness was shaken and people ran out of the kingdom of darkness and they came into the kingdom of light. And God welcomed them. Now, I believe, you know, people are so critical about the church. And many people are very negative about the church. Now, I'm not. Because I believe in the word. And I know some things. That Jesus always leaves the best for last. He left the best wine for last. And even in one of the prophets said that the glory of the latter hours is going to be greater than the glory of the former hours. And they were speaking of the temple of Solomon where the glory of God came in so powerfully that nobody in that temple could stand on their feet. God's glory was there. And I believe that glory is going to come. But we need to go through now. Through all the tests, we need to humble ourselves. Say to somebody, we need to humble ourselves. Don't exalt, do not exalt ourselves, but humble ourselves under His mighty hand. And I'm not saying it's an easy thing, because we're dealing, in our own lives, we're dealing with our own pride, our own egos, our own will. But we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And as we humble ourselves, He will exalt us. He will take us to the next level. There is something like the divine promotion. Amen. When God exalts us by Holy Spirit, this word authority is the Greek word exousia, which means jurisdiction, liberty, power, right, strength. He gave the disciples the right to cast out demons, to heal the sick. And so it is with us, because we are the body of Christ. Now let's go back in history a little bit. Speak about Adam. By subjecting himself to Satan. This was in the Garden of Eden. Why? What happened? We need to understand where this thing came from. By subjecting himself to Satan, Satan, Adam gave up three things. I want to share with you these three things that he gave up. We remember that before the fall, Adam was living in paradise. Adam and Eve. Sorry, Eve. I didn't forget. 
Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. They lived there in paradise. And they walked with God. And Adam had great authority. He was clothed by heavenly clothes. He, he wore the glory of God. The Shekinah glory covered him. He was not naked because he was covered by the Shekinah glory of God. But then what happened? We know that Eve transgressed and Adam followed her because he loved her. And then what happened? He subjected himself to Satan and he gave up three things. Number one, he gave up his kingdom relationship. What does that mean? That means he died spiritually. The moment he, he subjected himself to Satan... He lost his relationship with the Lord and he died spiritually. Holy Spirit departed. Holy Spirit left his spirit. His spirit became dark. He, left, he lost all his knowledge, his revelation knowledge of God and he became a carnal man. He became a soulish man. His spirit was cut off from God. And that's why Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So his spirit needs to be uh, reborn. How? By uh, the, uh, receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit back because God is life. He's the source of life. He's the source of light. Amen? We read in the book of John, in Him, that is Jesus, in Him was life and that life was the light of men. That life of Jesus was the light of men. And darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness cannot understand the life of God. The light of God. Can you say amen? You see, when we get born again, we are reconnected to the Father. We receive Holy Spirit, the light of life. We receive Him. And we are in the light. We're not in the kingdom of darkness anymore. We are in the kingdom of light. Spiritually, we are alive. We are in Christ. When we get born again. Secondly, he gave up his kingdom garden, his walk with God. Because every night the Lord would come and he would walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. They, they had fellowship, they had intimacy. God was teaching them, he was sharing things with them, and they had communion with him. They experienced his love, his goodness, his kindness. But when he subjected himself, he gave over, or he gave away his walk with God. He gave away the garden. We remember he was sent out of the garden. Number three, he lost his kingdom crown. That divine authority that God gave him. Because the Lord said to him, God gave him authority and said he must rule over the earth. He must rule over the animals, the plants and everything. He must subdue it and he must multiply and he must, he must be like a ruler on earth because man was, man was created to be God's ambassadors, God's representative on this planet to rule and reign. And this, is what, this is where it went wrong. He lost his kingdom crown, that divine authority. And then, am I going to fast? And then the last Adam came. And he was tempted. He was taken into the desert and to be tempted by Satan. Now this, listen to this. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. So that authority, that, that authority in this world, Satan took that. That's an evil authority. And he wanted Jesus to be tempted. He wanted Jesus to subject himself to him. And Jesus said, go away behind me, Satan. Can you remember that? And you see here, the word says, Satan said that it was delivered over to him. It was surrendered to him. It was yielded to him by the first Adam. That's how the God of this world came in to, to take rulership over this earth. He's the God of this world. The first Adam lost it. The last Adam regained it. So now, what is the thing now? We are seated in Jesus through our relationship with Him. I want to emphasize this this morning. 
our relationship with the Lord is so crucial. See, kingdom authority is not a position. It's not a title. It is a relationship. When the disciples started doing miracles, they started healing crippled people, they healed blind people, they even raised the dead. The Pharisees, they were shocked. And they realized, they recognized that the disciples were with Jesus. Their relationship with Jesus brought them to that place where they had divine authority. See how things are happening in this world now. The world is getting ready for the Antichrist and his kingdom and things like that. But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We've got much greater authority and we are going to overcome. Say to somebody, we are going to overcome. We are going to have the victory because we are the children of light. But we need to have a close relationship with the Lord and his word. That's why we called it this year, we called it the year of the word because we need to get the word inside. We need to have the word of God inside of us. Because, because the word of God brings the authority. It gives us the authority. When we speak the word of God, that is the authority. We release the authority. It's not difficult. Yeah, in John 15 verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. He's speaking about the vine. He's calling himself the vine. Why a vine? Because a vine grows upward. It climbs up. You know? It's not like a creeping plant. You get creeping plants. They creep here. You know, like a pumpkin. You know, creepy on the ground. But a vine goes over a wall. It grows over. It grows over. It's speaking of resurrection life. If you have resurrection life, we have the divine authority in us. Come on now. And have we got the resurrection life? Yes, by faith we have. Say by faith. by faith. I have got resurrection life. When I came out of that baptism pool and I, I was a brand new man, I received resurrection life. I'm, I'm not living anymore. Christ is living inside of me. I'm living in resurrection life now. I'm going to overcome sin. I'm going to overcome my flesh. I'm going to overcome the devil, the demons, whatever comes against me, the world. I'm going to overcome it. How? By resurrection life. I'm part of the vine. Sometimes we forget that. I'm, I'm speaking about myself. I don't know what happens during the night time because I think at night time Satan is trying everything in his power to get access to us. But sometimes when you get up in the morning you feel tired. Who knows what I'm talking about? You don't even feel like going to work. It's just your body feels tired. It feels like you've, you've run a marathon or something, you know. I don't know if it's just because you're get, getting older. You know? But I don't feel. I don't feel. Say to somebody, I don't feel. But I believe. I don't feel. I do, it doesn't feel like I'm on the mountain. I'm on the top of the mountain. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like I'm down in the valley. I feel depressed. But I'm not depressed because I believe what the word says. I, and then, you know what I do? I get up and I start walking and I say, I've got the life of God in me. I've got the power of God in me. I've got the spirit of God in me. I've got the word of God in me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It takes me 10, 15 minutes and something happens. The atmosphere changes. The depression goes away. And I come out of my, my closet and I'm walking in the spirit of God. Why? Because I'm seated at the right hand side in Christ Jesus. I have got authority over these demons in this world. But I can allow them to rule over me. And I can promise you it's getting... People who are not walking in the spirit but in the flesh, I mean, you are going to find them all over. They're walking in the flesh. And the flesh is enemy towards God.
Let's finish off. The good news of the gospel, see, by grace through faith in Jesus, we regain our kingdom relationship. That is the gift of righteousness. You see, through the gift of righteousness, we are seated in Christ. That's a gift from God. And we have accepted it by faith. Because the righteous shall live by faith. That's the only way we live by faith, believing in God. Our kingdom garden, love, peace, and joy. Jesus regained that for us. He went to the garden of Gethsemane. And there he prayed and he prayed until his, his sweat became blood drops. And he surrendered himself to the Father and said, not my will, but your will be done. But what did he do? He regained that garden, that walk with God, that intimacy. Jesus regained it for us. Come on now. And then what about number three? Our kingdom crown. It is that authority in the name of Jesus. It's anointing. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, they put, a, they, they put that thorny crown on his head. And they mocked Jesus. Because that crown speaks of authority. Jesus took upon him our earthly authority. That authority that causes more pain and, and, and shame than anything else. Jesus took that upon himself and he gave us his golden crown. He gave us his authority. Come on now. And he said, in my name, now you can go and you can preach the gospel. You can cast out the demons. You can heal the sick. Just believe. Believe. You know, we've got up here, we've got this other thing called a brain. But this brain can be a, a doubt box. Doubt. Hello? We have to overcome this brain. We need to take our, our thoughts captive. We've got weapons, spiritual weapons. And the devil will come and he will, he will throw us with all kinds of thoughts. And we think it's, those thoughts are our thoughts. No, they're not. They are from the devil. But what do we need? We've got authority to take those thoughts captive. I, I went through a stage at one time a couple of years ago. When as soon as I get into worship, and I start worshiping the Lord. All of a sudden I would get these, these pictures. Not good pictures. Like it was like, not good pictures. I don't want to be, exp I just want to say to you, not good pictures. So it, it blocked my worship. And all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, Satan is here. He's trying to block and steal my joy. So I took authority. I said, Satan, I rebuke you. I won't accept those thoughts now because I've got the mind of Christ. I've got the mind of Christ. I've got the mind of Christ. I'm sitting with Christ at the right hand of the Father. I've got the mind of Christ. You know what happened? My thoughts cleared up. Because he, if I allow him, he's going to stay there. He's, you know, there's something that said you can't prevent a, a bird flying over your head. But you can stop him from making a nest in your ear. Amen? We can take authority over the devil. And cast him out. When I get all these perverse thoughts, cast it out in Jesus' name. So I don't think about these earthly things. I, my mind is renewed. I think about heavenly things. I think about those things that are at the right hand side of God. Those things that are pure. Those things that are worthy. Those things that are good. I think about those things. I take my thought captive. And we will overcome him. And the anointing will increase in our lives because we have received our crown and we can now walk in divine authority. We're going to close with this scripture now. For if because of one man's trespass, that was Adam, death reigned. It means death got authority over all of us. Over all who are born out of Adam, the earthly Adam, death has got authority over our bodies. That's why we get old. That's why we get sick. But there's going to be a day coming that that's going to change also. That our bodies are going to be changed in an instant. In the twinkling of an eye, we're going to have the same body as Jesus. Can you say amen? Let's give him a praise. It says here, death reigned through that one man. Death reigned through that one man. Death came through Adam because of his transgression. 
It came through the seed of Adam from all generations, generations. Here am I and you. And we suffer because of those transgressions. But thank you, Jesus. He came to turn things around. He came to reverse things again, to win it back. As the Son of Man, He came. The last Adam. The Bible says here, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. The word says here, through this divine authority, we can begin to rule in this life. When we need provision, we have authority to call in provision because God will provide for us like He provided for the disciples. When they didn't have catch any fish, He gave them abundance of fish. He gave them bread. Come on. Amen. It's the same Jesus that lives inside of us. That's why we shouldn't fear. If the economy crashes, if they say, listen, you, there's no more economy now, how are you going to live? We can say, greater is he that is in me. I take that bread, and this bread is going to multiply, and I can have enough food. Say, so, Lord, I don't only want bread. I want some eggs as well. Yeah. <laughs> and what about some meat? Okay, I may have a small piece of steak like that. I take it out. I say, okay, how many are we? Okay, we are 10. Well, this small little piece is going to multiply for each one. Come on. Get your piece of steak. He will feed these people. Come on out. Because he's the supernatural God. We just need to believe. Come. Let's stand. I'm going to call the, the worshipers. And we're going to worship the Lord now.